we're going to be looking at the two source interference of waves. If the light is passed through two slits, then an interference pattern occurs between the light waves to produce bright and dark fringes. For the interference pattern to be observed, the size of the slits, its width, must be comparable in size to the wavelength of light. And that's so that sufficient diffraction will occur. Also, the two slits must be close to each other so that the diffracted light can meet and interfere with each other to produce this interference pattern. And the final condition needed is that the light from the slit is coherent, meaning that the light passing through both the slits have the same frequency so that there is a constant phase relationship between the light from the two slits. Now, a constant phase relationship means that the phase difference between the light waves from the slit is fixed. So, for example, they're both in phase or they're both in antiphase, but it's a fixed phase relationship, fixed phase difference between them. Light from filament lamps or the sun is not coherent, and that's because it is made up of many wavelengths, and these wavelengths of light are being produced randomly. So the phase relationship, the phase difference between the wavelengths is constantly changing. So there's no fixed phase relationship between the wavelengths, so it, the light is not coherent. However, laser light is coherent. It is monochromatic, mono meaning one, chromatic colour, but rather it has only one wavelength. And the laser light is all being produced in phase, all at the same time. So all the laser light have this fixed phase relationship of being in phase so it's coherent. In 1801, Thomas Young was the first person to measure the wavelength of light by using the interference of light from two slits. However, at the time, he, there was no laser light, so he used a light source which he passed through a single slit so that there was sufficient diffraction to occur that the light from the single slit passed through the two double slits at the same time and so arrive with a fixed phase relationship and so are coherent. If we didn't have the single slit and because of the randomness of the light being emitted, the light arriving at S1 and S2 will not have that fixed phase relationship and so would not be coherent. And so we would not observe an interference pattern. So the single slit made the light from the two double slits coherent and so produced an interference pattern of bright and dark fringes that was observed on a screen that was placed beyond the slits. And if laser light was being used, because the laser light is coherent, you would not need the single slit. So what's amazing about this is that you have light adding together to produce darkness. So what's that all about? Well, the bright fringes, which is representing maximum intensity or maxima, occurs when the light from S1 and S2 have a path difference that is equal to a whole number of wavelengths. 
And so we'd say then that the waves are meeting in phase and we're getting constructive interference. The dark fringes which represents minimum intensity or minima, occurs when the light from S1 and S2 have a path difference that is equal to n plus a half lambda. So you have this additional half a lambda difference. And so we say then the light is meeting in antiphase, that is a 180 degrees phase difference. And so the light is interfering destructively. So the light is cancelling out to produce darkness. And this interference pattern is not only true for light, but is true for any two coherent sources of waves. So for example, microwaves, sound waves, water waves, you can see a similar interference pattern of maxima and minima. This diagram is showing you the apparatus needed for two source interference using microwaves. We have a microwave transmitter which is directed towards a double gap from these metal sheets and beyond the metal sheets you have a microwave probe receiver that detects, picks up the microwaves and the receiver is attached to a meter so we can get an indicator of the intensity of the microwaves that are being received. And if the microwave probe is moved parallel to the sheets, then regions of high and low intensity are detected, representing our maxima and minima that is where constructive and destructive interference between the microwaves. To obtain two source interference using sound, you can connect two loudspeakers to a signal generator. So the sound waves being emitted will be coherent. And a person walking along in front of the loudspeakers we'll hear regions where the sound is loud and then regions where it's quiet, representing our maxima and minima, our constructive and destructive interference between the sound waves. Fringe spacing is the spacing or the distance between successive maxima so successive meaning consecutive or neighbouring adjacent maxima or distance between successive minima. And it's found from this equation where lambda is the wavelength, d is the large distance, so that is the distance from our sources S1 and S2 and the screen where we're observing the fringes. And A is the little distance, which is the distance between the two sources, S1 and S2. So from this equation, fringe spacing can be increased by either increasing the wavelength, because the wavelength is directly proportional to fringe spacing, or by increasing our distance d, that is the distance between the sources and the screen. Again, because the fringe spacing is directly proportional to distance d. Or by decreasing a, the distance between the two sources. And that's because fringe spacing is inversely proportional to a. I'm now going to go through the proof of the fringe spacing equation. It's not a proof that you need to know for the exam, so it's for those who are interested in where the equation arises from. You have your two sources of coherent waves, S1 and S2, separated by distance A. You have a screen at distance D 
beyond where the fringes are being observed and this distance D is much much greater than distance A. At point zero a maximum will occur and that is because point zero is equidistant from S1 and S2 that is equal distance away from S1 and S2 so the path difference from the waves from S1 and S2 will be zero so the waves will meet in phase and constructive interference will occur. Point P is where the next maxima occurs where constructive interference is occurring between the waves from S1 and S2. So the distance between points O and P that is the distance between successive maxima is our fringe spacing x. Tan of this angle theta is equal to the opposite which is our fringe spacing divided by the adjacent which is our distance d. If we first consider the path taken by the waves from S1 to reach point P and then the path taken by the waves from S2 to reach point P. Well, the path difference to get the first maxima must equal to a whole wavelength. And so this here is representing the path difference of a wavelength. If we now zoom into this section here, we get this. So remember, D is much, much bigger than A. A, the distance between S1 and S2. And the path difference between the waves that are arriving at point P is equal to a lambda, the wavelength. This angle theta is the same as this angle here and the reason why is if d is much much greater than a then these three lines can be considered parallel so these lines are making an angle of theta from the horizontal so if this angle is theta then the line s2p is making an angle of 90 minus theta relative to the vertical. And if this is representing 90 degrees because of the parallel lines, then the angle here must be equal to theta. So we've seen before that tan theta equals our fringe spacing x divided by the distance d distance between the sources and the screen but well, we can also use trigonometry and we can see we've got angle theta we've got the opposite which equals the wavelength and we have the hypotenuse which is equal to a so we've got the opposite and the hypotenuse so that means we can use the sine term and say that sine theta is equal to the wavelength, our opposite, divided by our hypotenuse A. So for very small angles, theta, that is measured in radians, then tan theta will approximately equal sine theta. And so we can equate these two equations. And so if we rearrange to make fringe spacing the subject, we get our equation for fringe spacing.